So that is exactly how Next.js works and is different from a React.js build. And that is why Next.js is super fast, super easy and super performant. Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Smehul and in this video, we'll be discussing what exactly Next.js is, but more importantly, how it exactly works. Because you would have seen a lot of videos on React, Next.js, what is the difference? But let's just go ahead and with the help of this whiteboard, get a little bit into the technical details of how in the architectural sense, Next.js works compared to React.js. Okay, so before we get into Next.js, let's actually understand how React.js works in order to appreciate what Next.js does. So what React.js does is that on a production website, this is a server, this is a client, and this server could very well be just a CDN, right? It need not to be a server like EC2 or anything. It could be just a CDN as well. CDN is just a dumb server, which just knows how to present files, right? It does not know how to compute and stuff. I mean, it knows to a certain degree, but you cannot really run scripts and everything. CDNs are optimized for file delivery, not for compute. So this CDN delivers this client a single file on the handshake, right? Index.html. Now this index.html actually contains inside its source code, it contains something known as bundle.js. Now this file could be named pretty much anything, but I think the default name for React is bundle.js. And this bundle.js actually contains a lot of JavaScript code, which contains the React runtime, which contains what the page should look like in terms of JSX and the components, um, how the routing should work, how your pages should be structured, should be layout and everything. So basically this index.html right here is pretty much blank. So it's pretty much a blank document, which only contains this bundle.js as a bootstrap point. Now, why do we do this? This is required because React is fundamentally a JavaScript framework, right? It cannot run without JavaScript. Even to construct the layout, when you do a return, return h1 inside of JSX, this actually gets compiled down to react.create element and that's syntax, right? Or some modern syntax with JSX, right? But this technically is still JavaScript. It's not HTML. In order to do that, it has to deliver a JavaScript file to the client and the client has to execute this JavaScript first. So it has to execute this JavaScript first in order to understand what the page should look like. This is how very simply React.js works. Server right here has very minimal role in terms of speeding up your application, right? The server right here can only do so much. It can just increase or decrease rather the time to first byte. That is how soon the server starts responding. And you can pretty much max it out by using a CDN here instead of a server, right? Don't want to use an EC2 instance or a digital ocean droplet here if you're using a static website using React.js, but rather you want a CDN here, which is CDN, which is placed around the world for it to speed up the delivery and the delivering your static files. Next.js on the other hand, however, is a bit interesting. And why is that? That is because some of the features of Next.js actually require you to run a live server. Now this server, in fact, could be serverless, but it needs a Node.js process, right? So it needs a Node.js process. And the fact if you're using it with a provider like Vercel, which has a first class support for Next.js, you can actually put a CDN in between as well. This is the important part with Next.js alongside with the server side rendering as well, but we'll discuss that. So let's assume you are hosting a website on Vercel right now. You can do it on AWS as well using something known as AWS serverless Next.js. There's a whole full-blown architecture in serverless, how you can use AWS for that. But Vercel is very, very simple compared to this setup. Okay, so what is happening here is this is the client. And remember what we discussed with React.js is that your bundle.js comes from the server and gets executed and the page is displayed, right? So what some people thought, well, what about if we try to execute this React instead of on client on the server and send the initial generated document to the client? It seems like a nice idea, right? I mean, on first thought, you might understand that this, this seems like a valid idea that you just generate the HTML on the server and send it to the client. But the problem here is that this HTML needs a bit of revalidation. That means, in React, you write event handlers and functions and you access window and you do a use effect which runs after the component is mounted and all of that is not available on the server, right? It is too expensive to just run a puppet or a headless browser and render it and you know do that stuff. So what people do is they actually wrote 
a renderer, server side renderer for React, which is known as React DOM slash server. Right, so this is actually a package which you can also use to natively export the React DOM into a static HTML string, which then you can rehydrate. By rehydrating, what I mean is that you just magically attach all the event listeners again to the static HTML blob which you sent and that's done. But again, there are multiple problems here. It's not as simple as just doing this stuff. And that is where Next.js comes in. That is where this Next.js framework comes in because it abstracts away all of these details of rehydration and server-side rendering and everything from you. And on top of it, because it is running on a server, it can actually give you additional superpowers, which are not present with just a simple static React.js bundle. So what Next.js does as a first job is that it renders the same page on server, right? So it renders the same page on server, which you're seeing in a Next.js, in a React.js application. Once it does that, it creates an HTML blob out of that, right? So this is an HTML document which is up and ready for the person to just open in the browser. And if you don't know this, HTML is in orders of magnitude faster than JavaScript. So if you have a document which just shows some HTML document, and if you have a JavaScript document which constructs that from the scratch, then you're gonna see that browsers are very, very, very optimized to display the HTML part very quickly compared to executing the JavaScript because JavaScript is a programming language, right? It needs to boot up the whole V8 runtime environment in order to parse the language syntax and do so much stuff. HTML on the other hand is a markup language and browsers have really optimized themselves to actually construct layouts very quickly. So HTML is very fast compared to JavaScript based DOM rendering, right? So that is why Next.js is super fast compared to React.js for JavaScript. Now this difference probably does not matter a lot if you have very small or simple applications, but if you are approaching a size where this difference becomes kind of like, you know, 50 to 100 milliseconds, then it can impact the user experience, even 100 to 200 as well, right? So, and this happens, right? This happens a lot of times. If Even if you just have a library like Moment.js, for example, for date parsing, which is a very common job, right? If you do it on the server side and create an HTML out of that, that is much, much faster compared to doing a Moment.js render on the client side and then displaying the formatted date. All right, so the first thing Next.js does very well is that it renders the HTML on the server side and generates this blob of HTML data, which we have. The next smart thing which it does, at least if you're hosting it on Vercel or yourself or you know you're using a CDN, is that this can store the statically generated page on the CDN, right? So what the CDN is, like we discussed briefly, it's a content delivery network, but in simple words, it's just a dumb server, right? So it's a dumb server which does not usually execute a lot of code, right? So this is a dumb server. It is just meant to serve files to the user. That is it, that's all it does. And the second thing CDN does is that it is pretty much, you know, spread across the world. So if this is Earth, then you're gonna see that companies like AWS or Cloudflare or even Vercel, I think Vercel uses AWS anyway. So these companies have a lot of CDNs in multiple countries, right? Which are ready to serve any sort of file closest to the user. So this CDN can deliver files super quickly, right? The fact that you don't have to render this React on server is super critical because Node.js is not friendly with CPU, right? Node.js is a slow language for CPU bound tasks. That means whenever you are server side rendering it, chances are that it is going to be a slower time to first byte, right? Because your server would actually need to compute the HTML. That is why with frameworks like Next.js, which supports server-side rendering, the best mix is actually using server-side generation plus revalidation. What is this? This is exactly what we talked about, which is a bit of a cheating in the sense that you do generate the page with server-side rendering, but you put it on the CDN, the CDN delivers it to multiple clients in a very fast way, and then maybe you are regenerating this page in the background every five seconds or every two minutes or every three minutes or whatever you want to do, right? So even if your server is a bit slower in generating the page completely from scratch, your clients do not face this problem because they have been served by the CDN, which is super fast, right? So this is a super interesting architecture and it can suit a lot of applications from code dump, for example, we use Next.js server site generation a lot to news articles, to blog posts, to generic websites as well. 
which don't require a very critical real time data thing and even if you do require that then you can always separate your view layer from your you know real time data layer so this client could probably connect to a web socket here which is hosted on aws let's say and then this web socket can retrieve real time data but the main document which serves the page itself can very well be hosted on a cdn right and it can be done in react therefore this client receives the page super fast it's seo friendly there is performance there is pretty much anything you can think about now remember i told you that Vercel does need a server here running or maybe serverless and the reason for that is because of the server side regeneration server side revalidation basically because what you can say to Vercel on the server side itself is that hey let me just go ahead and regenerate this page at most one time every five seconds so the moment you do that Vercel automatically runs some sort of script or what, whatever internal architecture they have, but the CDN flushes out whenever there's a new copy of the page available, right? So whenever the server says that, hey, there's a new copy available for this, then the CDN says, okay, I'm just gonna stop serving the older copy and start serving the newer copy to the clients, right? So for this process, you need a server. Vercel needs a server, and again, you don't really manage this if you're hosting it on Vercel. If you're hosting in this on AWS, then of course you have to manage that stuff a bit. But yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty interesting. So that was a bit about what Next.js is and how it works on an architectural basis. Hopefully, if you were new to Next.js or React, you were able to get a grasp of the idea of what Next.js is and how it works on the server side. Of course, there are more components to Next.js just compared to just what we discussed, but maybe we can take up that in probably some other video. So that is pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'm going to see you in the next one really soon.